Do you have small hands for a pianist? I certainly do. I've spent a lot of time researching how to get around this, and today I'd like to share some of what I've discovered so far. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do subscribe, just hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's all done for you. When I first decided I was going to relearn to play piano and I was chatting to some of my friends about it, a couple of them who didn't know me when I was young, when I used to play quite often, made the remark, well, well you don't have pianist hands, do you? And one of them had never even played piano themselves, so clearly there's sort of an expectation that to be able to play piano, you're going to have large hands. However, there are plenty of exceptions and there are plenty of very good pianists who don't have massive hands and don't forget all of these child prodigies who play wonderfully well and clearly their hands are nowhere like as big as they're going to be when they're fully grown. I think therefore it's safe to say that having smaller hands isn't an absolute barrier to being able to play piano well. You know, mainly when we think about small hands, what people focus on is how far those fingers can reach. So can you play an octave, a ninth, a tenth, an eleventh? You know, my personal reach is an octave quite comfortably. I can just about do a ninth on white keys if it's a slower piece of music, but anything further than that is totally impossible. Clearly, there are lots of pieces that do have bigger reaches than an octave if you want to play them. And you'll see the advice which is perfectly valid. If you need to do this, you simply roll the chord perhaps, or play one note in the right hand rather than the left hand to enable you to make that stretch. Or indeed, if necessary, just miss a note out. First, let's think a little bit about what we mean by small hands then. I mean, my hands aren't small per se, it's just uh, that I've got relatively short fingers. As a result, if I spread my hands out like this, then irrespective of the angle between my um, joints at the knuckle, the actual distance between my fingertips will be that much smaller than somebody who has longer fingers. And then of course, there's the feeling of tension you get when you stretch your hand. So if you spread your hand just gently like this, then clearly your muscles and tendons are making some effort to keep your fingers apart, but not a great effort. However, as you then try to increase the stretch, you will notice that you're needing to spend, of course, a lot more muscular effort to stop your fingers from closing up again. And this is where the tension starts. And this, I think, is the biggest problem for pianists with smaller hands, that we will be naturally more prone to tension because we need to stretch our fingers out that little bit more than people with larger hands do. And so we will get tense if we don't pay specific attention to this point. So let's apply this then to playing octaves, for example. If your hands are larger, then to be able to reach an octave, you might only need to just open your hands ever so slightly and your finger length will naturally help you make that reach. However, if your fingers are smaller like mine, then you're going to need to apply a little more muscular effort to pushing your hands to stretch out that little bit further to actually reach the octave. Therefore, the actual problem isn't that you can't reach it, it's how do you remain relaxed whilst you're reaching an octave stretch like that. So then, whilst practicing any passage with octaves, even if it's just two or three octaves one after another, I think it's important to actually think carefully about allowing your hand to contract between the octaves rather than keeping that locked position that is sort of the almost natural thing that you're going to do, knowing that the next thing you need to play is another octave. If you keep your hand locked out, 
you think it would be easier to get. However, that's the problem, that you'll get some tension in your hand if you do that. So if you can let your hand relax ever so slightly between the two, then it will help you greatly later on. This, of course, is something that you'll actually consciously need to think about. However, if you look at a Perni Say Lang Lang who's got, you know, absolutely enormous hands, I doubt an octave is even any kind of stretch at all for him, so he would play an octave in a perfectly, perfectly relaxed position and be able to repeat them. Another problem you might notice with smaller hands is that certain chords can be quite awkward to play. So take, for example, this chord in Chopin's C-sharp minor waltz. For me, even though it's only an octave end-to-end, -end, because of the particular combination of notes, it's actually quite an awkward shape for me to form with my hand. So you might think that I'd be stuck with being overly tense when trying to play this. However, there's a very useful exercise I found recommended by Graham Fitch, which I believe from memory he calls walking. So effectively, you make the chord in your hand, keep it as relaxed as you possibly can, and then one finger at a time, you take that finger for a little walk around the notes just adjacent to where it's playing. What you'll find is if you keep doing this over a period of time, eventually your hand becomes much more comfortable with the overall shape of that chord, and it takes a lot less effort to form it. Sticking with the topic of chords, there's also the problem of what Neuhaus in his book The Art of Piano Playing calls sympathetic notes. So this is especially when you're playing a, a louder dynamic, what can happen is when you play the chord, one of the fingers that isn't actually involved in playing can inadvertently strike one of the adjacent keys and you end up with these extra sympathetic notes as he calls them. Now, Neuhaus himself says that he has small hands and so understands this problem quite well. You know, in his book, he says that if you have larger hands, then being able to keep these unwanted fingers out of the way isn't so difficult to do. But when your hands are that little bit smaller, you need to actually work specifically on strategies for avoiding the specific sympathetic notes that you'll get. And that might be the angle of your wrist, the level of your wrist, even your forearm, your elbow, whatever. But it's something that you'll need to spend a little bit of time on to work out before you'll be able to get the musical effect that you want. Equally, I think when practicing chordal passages, it's important to build in some kind of relaxation reflex into your hands. So the way that I've been doing this is effectively anything that's got large passages of chords in it, I will just, between each chord, form a very loose fist in my hand, in both hands if it's chords in both hands, just to avoid locking my fingers into position. Another thing that's worth thinking about is what I've heard referred to as closed hand positions. So this basically is that, you know, when your hand is at rest, your hand and fingers will close together and curve ever so slightly, and it's your body's natural reflex to get into the position that's most comfortable and requires the least amount of effort to maintain. So therefore, when you're playing the piano, ideally, you'd want to keep your hands as closed as possible but clearly you can't keep them constantly closed for all of the music that you're playing, and it is necessary to stretch your fingers out a little bit. However, this is where I think that with a little bit of thought, you can enable yourself to play in what I'll call the, the open position, which is where your hands are stretched out to the point that it doesn't feel that it's taking any effort at all, rather than being stretched out beyond that point where you do need some effort to maintain it. If you look, for example, at the left hand in list constellation number three, it's basically simple arpeggios, and to play these, you need to keep your fingers relatively outstretched. Or in fact, do you? What I've noticed is that if you start incorporating movement of your wrist from left to right, you can actually keep your fingers far more close together than if you're trying to play with your fingers alone, because effectively your wrist moves your fingers into position without you needing to stretch them yourself. 
Playing on a mixture of black and white keys when you've got smaller hands provides a slightly different challenge as well, especially at speed. Whilst my fingers are relatively short, they're also relatively fat. And what that means is I find it difficult to get my fingers in between the black keys to play the white key on that thinner stretch that you have. So to be able to play white keys, really, I want my fingers to be more out towards the edge of the key. And then when I need to play black keys, because my fingers aren't particularly long, I can't just stretch out to get the black key as some people could. So I have to consciously think about moving my hand in towards the fallboard a little bit to be able to get the black key. Clearly, this in and out motion is required of every pianist. It's, it's standard piano technique, isn't it? However, I'm just saying that if you have smaller hands, then you probably need to pay slightly more attention to it as it's gonna to need to be more finely judged than for people with larger hands. I hope this video has given you some ideas if you have smaller hands of different ways you can practice. I guess I'll be recording more videos on this topic because it's something that I'll continue to research and if I discover things that appear to help me, then I'll be of course sharing them with everybody. You've probably noticed that I've not mentioned anything about stretching exercises here and that's for a good reason. I think if you want to do this kind of exercise, then make sure you have a teacher that knows what they're talking about, that can see your hands, that can see the range of movement that you've got before you start embarking on trying to increase their flexibility. To be honest, I nearly did myself some serious damage after watching a YouTube video and trying to stretch my hands out further than they wanted to go naturally. And it was made them very sore for quite a few weeks. So for the time being, I'm just gonna focus on the techniques in this video and keep researching for others that will allow me to play with my smaller hands and be less tense about it. Please remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner before you go. Click on that little bell icon so you're notified of all new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.